seems like when when you did that video, she had more than one of her children living with her yeah. in Kiribati. It must have been very difficult for her after her children had to go to New Zealand. Yeah, that was the probably, she says herself, is the biggest sacrifice she made, yeah. is that she had to send her children away to New Zealand to get further education, that yeah. sort of thing. She was asked by the Baha'is of New Zealand to go there as pioneers. We don't have missionaries right. in the Baha'i faith. We're not missionaries. So we go to a country and we have get our job and we're not supported by sort of any mother church, if you will. Right. So Baha'is then just go. We're still uh, Baha'is along with the other Baha'is doing the Baha'i work. And nobody's an authority. Nobody is higher than somebody else and that sort of thing. Yeah. So that was, she says, is her only sacrifice. And uh, everything else she plans to live there yeah. until they bury her bones, as right, she says. Right. <laughs> It's natural that they have acquired the language out of, from their environment, but they've also acquired English. In terms of speaking language, English was definitely a second language. Neither of them spoke English in any fluent form until we took them to New Zealand. And in Conrad's case, it was when he was nearly four years old. I, I'm really grateful <laughs> that one of the benefits of pioneering has been having children who are, who are bilingual. They seem to us, to, anyway, to be perfectly at home in, in two no. cultures, uh, because here they are ikiribas, and all of their friends are ikiribas. Wait.